Okay, so in this video clip, we're going to take a look again at uh, the Titanic Tree data set, Consider Age. And in the Google Colabs I've gone through, I've tried, tried to demonstrate the uh, efficiency and, uh, and elegance of the ggplot2 and tidyverse generally. And beautiful graphs are, are created in this uh, relatively simple syntax. Um, and Tidyverse uh, offers a lot in terms of uh, visualizing data, exploring data, performing uh, EDA, um, and understanding your data set. Um, but uh, you may want to create more powerful, more impressive type uh, graphics. Uh, and maybe want to escape a little bit some of the constraints uh, that are uh, that maybe are uh, limit a little bit the um, aesthetics of uh, ggplot2. I, I believe ggplot2 is probably that package is probably as good as you can make it, uh, given the simplicity of the syntax. Uh, but if you want to more heavily engineer a graphic, uh, let's say you're producing a set of um, visualizations that are intended for uh, maybe more public consumption. And uh, I use the term here, you have to dress to impress. So maybe you you not uh, graphing specifically for a business report um, or an academic report, but need to produce something that is uh, more stunning. I've come across an interesting, um, well, we have it here. If you double click, uh, there's a link to a Kaggle notebook where uh, basically uh, an awesome, right? And it is an awesome visualization is set up uh, demonstrating some of the um, the numbers uh, underpinning the uh, Titanic uh, uh, data set. And I am impressed by what's there and probably it's worth considering how we could leverage some of this. So what I've done is I've grabbed elements of the code here. This, let's just explore a little, this is Subin Ann, Subin Ann, uh, based in Seoul National University. Um, I'm going to take, uh, um, I'm going to explore his notebooks a, a little bit further, uh, but I do like this specific notebook and I'm going to try set it up in a Google Colab and implement. So, okay, I'm going to go back to Vinegar Hill. And first of all, we've already explored the relationship between age and survival in a previous uh, um Google Colab. So we're going to piggyback on that and then we're going to uh, follow Subin's uh, code and just implement in the same Google uh, Collaboratory. So I have it here, we just double click. Again, we're on the Vinegar Hill website. We're in Titanic Tidyverse and uh, we've opened up uh, that Google Colab. So we've already run through many of the estimations here and the visualizations, probably no need really to um, uh, explain each of the steps here. We do want to make Tidyverse available um, and we need, so we have the full suite of Tidyverse, it's great. And then we want to load in Titanic uh, data. So I'm going to use the well-known Titanic tree data set. Um, and uh, before when we, examined uh, that data, we observed that there was 14 uh, variables, 14 columns of data, and the P class and survival and so on was uh, captured there. We did some limited histograms, and then we also, when we converted the type, the survival to a factor, we were able to bifurcate the, those who survived from those who drowned. And, um, okay, that's fine. And we glimpsed, and you can see here now that survive is a factor. And then I run the same segment of code again, and you can see survivorship 
by age. And there is some evidence that younger people uh, did quite well in terms of survivorship relative to people in their 20s, maybe people uh, 15 and older, perhaps that's the cutoff. Uh, but also uh, a couple of very elderly people managed to survive as well. And that also is an interesting statistic, but it's dwarfed by this. Um, and uh, But that's also, so if you're very, very old, uh, there's only maybe two or three here. It's not a huge number, it would appear. Uh, they did very well, they survived, and they're very, very young, right? Um, okay, so we can break that apart. And again, Tidyverse is extremely good at this. Uh, and with a very simple, very, very simple syntax, you can produce very, very good graphing. And these are ideal for putting into business reports. Um, and they're easy to understand, easy to set up. So from a practical perspective, um, these are extremely good. We had run a logistic uh, regression before. We won't focus too much on that. Okay, so next step here. Uh, I'm going to use, instead of using R code, I'm going to use native Python code. I want to examine the same phenomenon again in terms of the relationship between age and survivorship. I've borrowed uh, Subin's uh, code here. Um, we're going to make available these libraries, matplotlib libraries, uh, Seaborn, NumPy, Panda, NumPy and Pandas uh, in um, the, uh, in the, this Python part of the notebook. Now, also, uh, Titanic tree, we've written out, so it should appear in our data, right? Now, there might be a little bit of, maybe it's in the content, but we should be able to see the Titanic tree appearing here in the sample data. Uh, let's just manipulate a little bit. Okay, now it's there. Now that, there can be a little bit of latency sometimes. I suppose there is 1,309 observations and 15 columns or 14 columns um, of data. So it takes a little while. You can download that now if you want. Um, uh, that's possible and that might be a useful thing to do. We're not, we're going to use it now in the Python uh, notebook. And I want to read that Titanic tree data set uh, in so we read that into the uh, into the into the Python uh, element of this notebook, um, and I basically just follow the instructions and the code, the commands set out by Subin. Uh, only minor changes are introduced here, and that is, um, I just change from uppercase to lowercase p. So where we make explicit reference to a variable in the Kaggle data set, these variables uh, tend, tended to have in the Kaggle data set uh, capital letters, at least for P class, survived, age, and so on. So I just changed the lowercase to be compatible with this Titanic tree. We can open that up a little bit and view over here, right? You can see it's all lowercase, right? So in the, in the code that Subin um, put up on Kaggle, of course, he was referencing the, the Titanic data set there. We don't, we just make small changes then to adjust for that, tiny, tiny, tiny uh, changes. So basically I've, I've taken that code, uh, presented in Subin's notebook and applied it directly here with minor changes, right? Then I run that um, segment of code and I get a very interesting uh, diagram, something that we hadn't really uh, looked at, at, at least uh, not using the same sort of metrics. Perhaps uh, maybe if we post this one. So let's take this and put uh, to one side here and we'll just bring up slightly and then compare the two. I suppose both uh, reveal um, similar features in terms of the data, survivors, uh, the age distribution. Um, obviously, um, if we look at first class, right, we can see uh, a, a bigger proportion of older people traveled. That's true for males and females. 
Okay, so there's nothing here relating to survivorship, but here we can see that it's kind of a broad, uh, if, if we're looking at terms of the, 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 the mode here, okay, um, it's a bit different. We don't have the same peakness anywhere in the distribution, whereas if we look at third class, right, around the age 20, a little bit higher, the early 20s, that's the bulk of passengers, both for males and females. And again, you know, uh, in all likelihood, what we're observing here is um, people in their 20s in third class were probably economic migrants. They were making this voyage. This was probably the only voyage or one of very few voyage, voyages that they're making because of the costs incurred. Um, and uh, so there's a concentration in the terms of age grouping, the age band, whereas over here, it's much more distributed. For uh, third class, more people in their 20s. Second class, something similar, maybe in their 30s. But in first class, the range of people traveling is not dominated by people in their 20s or their 30s or their 40s. It's more evenly distributed amongst that group. So there may well have been people traveling for leisure or for business. Uh, and people who are older seem to be traveling, right, in, in first class, okay? So if we want then to see a little bit more, uh, maybe uh, the effect of uh, to bifurcate between those who survived and those who drowned, uh, we can, again, I apply uh, Subin's code again and Python code and I get that distribution but bifurcated so we get the same graph as before um, and uh, we can paste that here and take a look right now I can close this off a little bit so we have a little bit more space to look at our graphs so we can manipulate this a little bit so we see a little better. That's what we've just looked at. Um, we can alter using uh, Python code, we can look at each of these uh, distributions and consider survival against those who drowned. And you can see in third class, less that this darker shaded area this darker blue, it's much less prominent than in first class. You can see a bigger portion of people survived in first class for all ages, right? Uh, the, particularly the young. Again, if you're younger, your odds looked a little bit better. That's true, okay? And that's actually what we're trying to convey here in terms of the diagrams. Again, these diagrams might be more uh, publishable uh, they're maybe a little bit less austere, a little bit more elegance, but does involve a lot more work in setting them up. So it's not when you try to develop these very these stunning visualizations, and I think they're stunning, and, and I, I think they're awesome, uh, it, the amount of coding and work you've got to put in here obviously is increased, right? So you have to invest time to get graphs of this quality. Uh, the tidyverse diagrams, however, are highly functional and they are elegant and they have a certain aesthetic and they convey uh, most of the uh, information you want to convey, right? So um, in that sense, they're highly practical. Um, there's one other further snippet of code here I thought I would share, but there was more in that project. And I think uh, you should look at the project uh, um, Go back to the original project here just to investigate a bit. But if we run this third snippet of code, we see something that perhaps we would have liked also to reveal. Um, we saw somewhat with the um, with the Titanic data. Um, and that is we observed with the with the tidyverse that people who were younger did do better in terms of survival, right? And uh, a bar chart here uh, conveys something as, as strikingly similar, um, but again, it is a quite a nice uh, graph. And again, for just clear effect of um, 
explanation around what's going on. Uh, this is a really nice graph. Um, we're looking at here the age. We're going in bands of 10. Um, we have the survival rate. Uh, so those 0 to 10 years old, 60%, 61% uh, survived. Those in their 80s to 90s, 100%. But of course, we can see what's driving that. It's uh, these... If we look at the numbers here, the people in their 80s, there was some people who were in their 80s. They obviously survived. Right? But if you were 80 years old, uh, looked like you were taken care of, right? So that this older age bracket, in fact, it's just this, these two in first class, or these few. And nobody in excess of 80 here was uh, uh, in second class and nobody above 80, I think, in third class. So uh, there was two or a few who survived in first class, male and female, and that's why we're getting 100%. It probably flatters a little bit. Uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's a tiny number driving this as well, right? But it does give us some sense, right? If you're extremely old, uh, just so happens you're in first class. Perhaps if you were that old, you couldn't have traveled in third class. Maybe the conditions wouldn't have been really appropriate for a very elderly person to uh, travel in third class, first class. Uh, you were in the, um, it was very luxurious and conditions were very pleasant. So traveling would have been fine, uh, but they survived, right? Um, but their numbers are few. Um, Again, I think this is very revealing. When we previously looked at the logistic re logistic regression, um, we discovered, if I can find that, it's just here, that the relationship, if we ran a, a, a sort of blind, naive logistic regression and regressed age on survival, it is negative, so that's kind of consistent with the story we're telling, but then statistically, it's not that significant, right? It doesn't make the 5% threshold in terms of the p-value. And you would be kind of, if you took a very strict kind of statistical approach here, you'd say probably we wouldn't use age as an explanatory variable in a regression model. However, when we look at these uh, visualizations, we can see age actually was very important in terms of uh, your survival prospects, particularly if you're in this zero to 10. Otherwise, okay, being younger or older, not much of a help here. And then there's a few exceptional cases where people in first class in their 80s survived. And I think uh, it's more because you're 80, you could only probably travel in you know, the, the, uh, uh, it, it may be in first class and it's more linked to being to class here, this survivorship than to uh, possibly age, right? Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, I like a lot this Python, um, uh, more engineered type graphs, uh, but a lot of work uh, for those who simply want to produce a very efficient practical graphs but it's, it is something within the scope of Python and it's worth uh, emphasizing Python is a very powerful language as well, this, even though we're, we have stressed a little bit tidyverse.